Hey guys, in this video, hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about how f-stop uh, controls depth of field and what that depth of field looks like in our image. So I just want to sort of make sure that we understand that our f-stop controls the way the photograph looks um, in one aspect, our shutter speed is going to control the way our photograph looks in another aspect, and our ISO controls the way that our photograph looks in another aspect. And so I want to start with f-stop because what I'm doing in this setup is I'm focusing here on the front of this contacts lens of contacts, or I focused on the word contacts. And that area is known as our critical plane of focus, okay? So this area um, is where we have set the lens's focus at. And the lens can actually only focus in one plane at a time. What we can do is we can use f-stop to uh, give the illusion that more things are in focus or less things are in focus, right? So in front of and behind this critical plane of focus, we have this ability to sort of make things blurrier or sharper. And that's called depth of field. It's called depth of field, depth of field, okay? So what I've done in this first image is I have focused in on the contacts. And you can see in Lightroom, once it loads, um, that that word is perfectly in focus. But as I scroll around the rest of my image, and let's get rid of that, you can see that this film here is out of focus. You can see that uh, the word portrait here is slightly in focus, but this film canister, a uh, vintage film canister, by the way, is uh, out of focus. Um, you can also see that like the Polaroid VHS and Maxell uh, beta cassettes uh, are out of focus in the back. Um, and so anything that sort of exists on this same line um, at f1.8 is going to be in focus. So let's actually go through and let's sort of see what happens when we go up in our f-stop. So what we're going to do is we're wide open at f1.8. Uh, wide open f1.8. And what we're going to do is we're going to close down the lens sequentially to sort of see how that affects our image. So if we go to this image here, now we're at f2.0. And that's our first actual real f-stop. And you can sort of see that, you know, maybe some things are a little more out of focus. Let's go back to here. So there's f1.8. There's f2. Not much of a difference, right? Then we go to f2.8, then we go to f4, and you can see that this uh, animal head is starting to become a little more in focus, and you can also start to read the words on the book back here. Uh, Aperture Magazine series, uh, really great photography after Frank, highly recommend. Um, I have to say that, you know, core curriculum by uh, the maestro Todd Papa George is a must read for anybody interested in photography. And do you see as I go now to F8, things start to become a little more clear. Now notice that the exposure, the amount of exposure, the amount of light hitting the sensor has not changed, right? Um, so what's happening is as I'm closing down the aperture, I'm extending the time I allow the shutter to stay open. And these are called equivalent exposures. So now, as I get down to like F16, you can start to see the jade plant is in focus, the Pentax camera in the back is in focus. And look at before, um, here we are back at F2.8. Look at the difference between F2.8 and F16. And you'll see that we're still focused on this contacts camera in front but look at the difference. So that's f2.8, f16, okay? And then we get all the way down to f22. So let's just sort of cycle through that again. Here we go, this is a shallow depth of field. Uh, the widest our lens can be at 1.8. 
then we go to 2, 2.8, and you can see the exposure again is not changing, but what happens to be in focus in front of and behind where we focused this camera to um, is sort of getting wider and wider and wider. That widening is sort of called a shallow depth of field for a small amount and an extended depth of field for a large amount. There we go again. And now we're all the way at F22. And I think it's sort of helpful to know that we have not changed where we focus, but let's look at that versus F1.8 in that same place. See how much blurrier that is? Beautiful. You can also sort of see back here in the Polaroid, uh, we can't really tell what that is. And then if I'm at F22, you can see the difference between there and there. Um, I also can come to like an F5.6 and things start to get a little sharper. Um, and then at F8, um, they get a little more sharper. And what's going to happen is every time I open up a full stop, my depth of field is going to uh, double. So if we're here at 1.8, just a small, small sliver, small, small sliver is in focus. And then it's going to double and double and double and double and double. And we can get things in focus. Um, let's sort of look at a little more dramatic version of this as well. Um, let's look at uh, one where we've moved the camera closer to the Tableau setup. And the closer we are to something, uh, you know, the closer we are to the critical plane of focus, uh, the more exaggerated that depth of field is going to be. So if you're having trouble getting something uh, to sort of be blurry or... Um, or out of focus, get really close to the subject. Get as close as you can. So here we go. 2, 2.8, F4, F5.6, F8, F11, F16, F22. So what I want you to do is I want you to try this out at home. I want you to sort of set something up and I want you to sort of get the meter in the middle and then I want you to go up and down the f-stop scale making pictures that have the same amount of exposure. So always try and keep that meter in the middle, okay? So that means if you adjust your f-stop, you're gonna have to adjust your shutter speed to compensate. 